Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do, this is going to be part one of a multi-part series and I don't know how long this is going to go on. It could go on forever depending on how long you uh, Ubiquity keeps updating the Unify software. But this is going to be kind of a part one, just a quick video to get some best practices rolling, get your brain flowing, get your juices going, make you start thinking about things uh, maybe in a way you haven't thought about before. So we're going to hop over to our cloud key and everything that we installed and we'll, we'll go through, we're going to start with Unify and then we're going to look at, once we get through uh, probably a couple videos of that, we're going to look at the underlying system. So whether it's a cloud key, whether it's your own Ubuntu server in-house, whether it's a digital ocean droplet, we're going to talk about some of those best practices. And so this video we're going to start, we're just going to do some simple things, get you thinking about it and you know things that'll make your life a little easier so we're logged into the site that we set up before and I, I actually did uh, factory default the devices so this is kinda like out of the box and I want to talk about a few of these things so the first thing that I want to talk about is by default your first site name is default that's not very helpful <laughs> and especially if you're gonna have multiple sites on your controller so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to settings and on this very first screen the site configuration right here you see the name default and up here you see current site says default so if we change this I'll change it to lab site one we'll hit apply and then you see up here it changed the current site to lab site one so now if I've got multiple sites I know <laughs> exactly which site this is I don't have to remember the IP addresses and uh, it's just going to make things a little bit easier, especially when you're managing multiple sites or you have multiple cloud keys and you've got multiple things going on, naming. So that's kind of my, my next thing. Since we're on this screen, another thing that you should always do is you should always have the correct time zone set. And time is very important. Yes, people will argue that time is a man-made construct, whatever. But the fact is that when we're dealing with failed upgrades, user logins, all these things, security auditing, time we're all on the same page with time time is essential so you want to make sure that you have the right time so that you understand when things are happening when they've occurred you know if you've got to do an autopsy of something uh, you gotta make sure that your time is correct it's very very important to make sure that your time is correct so you can see mine set on central time and that's where I'm gonna keep it because I am in the central time zone another thing that kinda goes hand in hand with that and since we're on this screen is right here there is remote logging enable remote syslog server so everybody says that they're worried about security but they leave all of the log files sitting on their unify server they leave it on their edge router well guess what if I'm gonna break into your unify server I'm gonna figure out how to trash those log files I'm gonna figure out you know anybody who intrudes your system is probably gonna try to hide those those logs and whether that means gaining remote access to the underlying operating system and messing with the the database which is I mean people who break into systems are very very smart so if you're really looking about security you're really worried about security where you have this installed enable the remote syslog server set up a syslog server that is not on the same box as your unify controller and send all that to that if you look back through my videos I have a syslogging I have a syslog video and it's it's easy you can get a free syslog server that'll handle so many devices throwing messages at it and you set it up on a you know a hard drive and there's all kinds of things involved with this and making sure that your security procedures are correct it's just like when we get to the underlying operating system I will show you on a VPS how to disable SSH completely because you don't need it unless you're gonna do upgrades and in fact you may not even need it then but enable a remote syslog server this is just another small thing that you can do you can only respond to the data that you have so make sure that you are saving that data uh, another thing when we're talking about networks now right now this is default but I'm gonna show you this and we're gonna create a guest network now what did I just do I just created a guest network and it's open make sure you're tagging guest networks as guest networks that way it sets up that that firewall access point or the access point on the firewall 
that keeps clients from seeing each other and keeps clients from getting to any RFC addresses. That's your 10 dot addresses, your 172 addresses, 172.16 through 172.31, and your 192, 168 addresses. The, the access point has that firewall built in and we'll block those. Now, when we get into some of the other best practices, I will show you how to take that and harden it even more. This will get you started. I don't like this option just like this, but it will get you started. We, we're going to build upon this in these in these videos, so stay with me. So we talked about naming uh, the site. We talked about the time zone. We talked about the syslog server, and it's this easy. Now, I don't have one set up at the moment, but I do eat my own dog food, and I will leave that there, and we will set that up. We'll go back over it just in case you forgot or you haven't seen the video. Um, I'm just kind of checking my list off. We set the time zone. We tagged the guest networks. The other thing, we named the site. But then the other thing with naming, and we're going to hop back and forth here. I, I've got this long list that we're following. The devices. Now, you saw me in the... That's not good. Let's see if we can get back home. Not 100% sure what that was all about. But now we're back on devices. Now, you'll notice in the other video, I, I, I say this a lot, but by default, the MAC address is the device name. How confusing is that? Especially if you're going to have customers looking at this. They're not always going to pay attention to the icon. You and I, we know that that's a USG and we can read it over here and we understand that. But the customer or you or your techs or whoever... Give these things friendly names. It takes two seconds. Don't, don't cheap out at this point. So we'll call this the Lab USG. And when you start dealing with more than two and three devices, especially switches, this is going to save you so much time. Just because you're not going to have to, you're not going to have to chase things down. So name your devices, whatever your nomenclature is. I can't decide that for you. You're going to have to decide what your nomenclature is. Make sure that you're naming devices appropriately. That's going to save you a ton of time. Along with that, in the next video, we'll get into static IP addresses because I do believe that is something that we still need to do. You saw me set the cloud key to a static IP. That is the very first thing, and you can see it still has that static IP, which is 1.2. We'll go back over that in the next video when we talk about static IPs. If you are going to use SNMP, which is under, they changed this around a little bit, SNMP, make sure you use SNMP version 3. It has a username and password. So if you're going to use SNMP, use SNMP version 3. The next thing, let's make sure that if you have voice over IP behind your USG, let's make sure that that SIP ALG is disabled. Now, I have noticed that on the new installs, it is coming disabled by default. You may have to at some point disable the H323, and there's actually an ALG that runs that is not on here. It's the RTSP ALG. You may have to disable that as well depending on your application. But if you are running voice, make sure that you disable this SIP ALG, especially if your voice over IP, voice over IP provider tells you to, because SIP ALG can cause problems, and I will say that we probably see it cause more problems than it solves a lot of the time. When we're talking about guests, we tag that guest network. So let's say we've got a site that's only got a 10 meg DSL service and you have five computers, you've got a little voice over IP, but you also have this guest network. You're providing this nice amenity to your guests. The next thing you should do is you should have a real hard conversation about rate limiting your guests. By default, this wireless network is going to be in the default, and they have unlimited bandwidth. So if you've only got 10 megs and you have 10 people on your, your public Wi-Fi, if this is like a waiting room, 
maybe a car dealership or whatever, create a guest user group and limit it. I will tell you that I think that a meg, a meg is enough, 1024K is enough, but if you get people who are complaining that they can't stream you know, Netflix or whatever, four, four meg is definitely enough. And if you've got the bandwidth to sustain it, you could go to four meg. I would start out at a meg, maybe two megs. Um, now I know I'm saying megs and this says kbps, but I'm, I'm doing kind of a conversion in my head from uh, kilobits per second to megabits per second. So uh, this is roughly four megabits per second. Have this conversation is very important. You do not want to stress your bandwidth, especially if you have things like voice over IP on your network. This also leads to a conversation of quality of service, which will come in the next video. Another thing when we're looking at the controller is if I have this sending me alerts, if I have it, which we'll get into later, or if I have this enabled on the cloud access, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see this, this unify controller name. So I like to, when I'm on this habit of naming things, I'm going to call this my lab controller. Then we're going to get into that fully qualified domain name conversation and we're going to get into over, overriding the inform host. There are some, some times that I don't think this needs to happen and we're going to talk about that, but especially with multi-sites, you need to have this configured and that's something else we're going to touch on. Like I said, this video is just kind of get you started, get you thinking. Ask questions down there. So uh, we are going to talk about that. The other thing is that you should always be running the auto backup and, the, and have it, you know, downloaded. Find out where that's at. Make sure the auto backup is running and then have a plan to back those up off of the controller because by default they go on your controller whether it's a cloud key an Ubuntu server in-house out at DigitalOcean they go on the server you need to have a plan whether it's a script that backs them up whether you have a Synology box that grabs those automatically you need to have a plan to get your backups off of the server we will go into more depth in that as well once we start talking about the underlying operating system. The last thing I kind of wanted to talk about was the alerts and you should get familiar with the alerts. Be familiar. This is where you get a ton of information. If you are administering Unify systems on the daily or even if you've just occasionally had them, you should be logging in, you should be looking at your alerts, you should also be looking at your events and I think that the events are just as important as the alerts and here is why you should really pay attention to the events not only can it give you some troubleshooting ideas about things that may be happening it talks about what's going on with your devices in the network but there's this tab called admin and this will tell you when an administrator logged in where the administrator logged in from it will tell you what the administrator did on the system. If someone's logging in through a console and they have admin access and there's not some exploit that we don't know about that bypasses this, a normal admin account, the actions are going to get logged here. You need to be familiar with this. You need to understand this. You need to look at this every day. We, we look at ours every day. I have dozens and dozens, uh, over a hundred controllers at this point that I have access to and when I get a chance I'm I'm looking at this now I spend a lot of time from 10 p.m. until midnight reading and looking at things or working with clients to help them understand this so that's it I, I kinda wanted to get you thinking this is kinda the introduction our first uh, kind of step into the best practices. The next video will get a little bit more in depth on some of these topics. We're going to build on this. So the next video though will either be, I'm going back to uh, Grandstream this week or our Synology build, but the next few videos for Unify are all going to be based on these best practices. The Unify videos. I do have some edge switch and edge router videos that are going to come in there too, but I want to get these best practices out to you. So look for, look for this to come. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
Please subscribe, please comment and share, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you do need consulting or you need advice, uh, best practice des design deployment or you want training, go to h5llc.com down there, get in touch with us, and we will definitely get you taken care of. Our Discord link is down there. Charlie's our admin. He does an awesome job with that. Also, if you go to h5llc.com down there, you can sign up for our newsletter. I send that out once a week on Sundays, and sometimes I talk about things. Most of the time I talk about things that I don't talk about in videos or on Twitter and Instagram, so sign up for that so we can stay in touch with you. If you need the voice over IP consulting, the network consulting, like I said, h5llc.com. I also have an Amazon shop down there. Uh, if you are looking for the gear that we use, it is in our shop. I want to thank you again for being here. Uh, thank you to all of the subscribers. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.